is March 15th, 2020, here in Southern Colorado, where the weather is just fine and dandy. No rain, no snow, just a little bit of wind. And perhaps two days, March 15th, 2020, this is two days before the end of Bernie's campaign, perhaps, perhaps, without a Hail Mary pass, a Berlin airlift, or a nullification crisis, Bernie's campaign is on the ropes. And it's dangling on by a thread. Bernie Sanders got some momentum back when California officially declared Bernie Sanders to be the winner. And yesterday, Saturday, March 14th, 2020, Bernie Sanders wins the Northern Mariana Island Caucuses, beating Joe Biden and Tulsi Gabbard. Chelsea Manning has been released three days ago. She had refused to testify against Julian Assange. So that's fantastic. What a fantastic freedom fighter. What a great, you know, um, I'm glad that Chelsea Manning is okay. Florida, Illinois, Arizona, and Ohio, these are the four states that Bernie's campaign is hanging on by a thread with. Florida, Illinois, Arizona, and Ohio. So Florida, Arizona, Ohio, those are conservative states. Illinois, I think it's two, except for maybe Chicago. So like George Armstrong Custer, this Tuesday is Bernie Sanders' last stand. The debate tonight is 8 p.m. Eastern Time, CNN, CNN.com. Joe Biden just has to, you know, not pass out, not drool on himself, not just uh, spit out a bunch of incoherent, you know, word salad bullshit. Joe Biden just has to remain coherent, put together full sentences. This is all Joe Biden's to lose. He's got this in the bag. Bernie's hanging on by a thread. Northern Marianas might be the momentum. It might be the wind beneath Bernie's wings that's going to get him up to the mountaintop. But tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, this is Bernie Sanders' put up or shut up moment. What you going to do, Bernie? You going to put up or you going to shut up? Fuck around and find out. That's what we've been saying, right? Fuck around and find out. What the fuck is Bernie going to say? Can a Bernie... But can Bernie Sanders, he's going to try to attack Joe, but he's going to try to maintain his friendship, right? Because either one of these guys can become president, so they have to work for the other guy. So they have to, um, you know, attack each other. Can Bernie Sanders attack Joe in such a nice, gentle, friendly way, but also strong enough to distinguish himself from Joe Biden to the American people? Joe Biden is right-wing neoliberal. Joe Biden is a creepy you know, creepy ass, just old grandpa groping sniff. Joe Biden cannot keep his hands to himself. And so Joe Biden, this is an easy candidate to, I think, beat. But then again, you know, compared to Donald, I mean, these are, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel here. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll find out tonight. Coronavirus actually helps Bernie's campaign. It stops Joe's momentum. You already got Louisiana and Georgia's canceled their elections. So it's like, you know, America's taking a breath. America's taking a break. Come on, America, take take a moment. Think about things for just a second, will you? Just for a goddamn second? Jesus Christ. Come on, just think about your country, where you want the direction you want it to go. Just for Christ's sake, for a second. Just for a goddamn second. The coronavirus is killing 80-year-olds, so the coronavirus is the anti-baby boomer. The coronavirus is taking out baby boomers more than something else. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> after a pandemic, after the coronavirus pandemic is over, Joe Biden isn't going to have any voters left. And But then again, dead people do seem to vote in our elections somehow. So we need ranked choice voting now. We needed ranked choice voting yesterday. Ranked choice voting now, ranked choice voting tomorrow, ranked choice voting forever. False imprisonment and battery. This is what Dred Scott had sued his white female master for, the Dred Scott decision, the worst Supreme Court decision ever. What a piece of crap, what an awful Supreme Court to have in 1857 to do what, false imprisonment and battery, you're going to defend that shit? Dred Scott had a point. False imprisonment and battery is bullshit. So I'm glad Chelsea Manning is okay after the attempted suicide. Her lawyer said she tried to kill herself. She's in the hospital recovering. Haven't seen any tweets or haven't heard any statements or nothing. But apparently 
Chelsea Manning is out. Chelsea Manning is free. So this is fantastic news. This is fantastic. This is great. Now we need to free Julian Assange and bring Edward Snowden back home. Julian Assange is faced with 175 years in jail. 100, he's already, what, 50 years old? So he's going to, you know, face 175 years in jail as if that was an over-fucking-kill just for publishing shit on WikiLeaks over in Europe somewhere. So he published something over in Europe somewhere. Government's real mad about it. They got 18 counts on him. Only two counts for the impeachment, but 18 counts for that show trial, you know, for that kangaroo impeachment trial. Just like all these, it's all political. I wonder if there's ever been any justice in any court whatsoever, goddamn ever. So this is happening in London, England, the capital of the honky heartland. That's where Edward Snowden is facing his extradition hearing. And then Edward Snowden is chilling in Russia. So the 1971 New York Times v. U.S. Supreme Court case clearly shows that Julius Assange did absolutely nothing wrong. He's the publisher. He's not the whistleblower. He's more of the New York Times or the Washington Post or a citizen journalist. A third party who published the information, not the actual whistleblower and or, you know, traitor or whatever the opposition is saying. So all this is just a bunch of sh bullshit, even American jurisprudence. 1971 New York Times v. U.S. clearly shows Julius Assange didn't do any goddamn thing wrong. But it's a bunch of kangaroo courts, and it's political. These kangaroo courts are being set up by the oppressors, a bunch of Stalin show trials being set up by the corrupt elite. District Judge Anthony Tringa said Chelsea services weren't needed anymore. <laughs> Oh, good job, Anthony Tringa. So fucking Anthony Tringa is the one that fucked over Chelsea Manning for a year. Chelsea Manning was in, a, in jail for a year after being in jail for seven years. Got arrested in 2010, got commuted. Chelsea was free for 22 months. And then in that 22-month span of you know time of freedom, Chelsea Manning ran for U.S. Senate in Maryland. So, challenging Ben Cardin. I mean, how many people, they have freedom their entire lives, and they don't run for U.S. Senate, not even once. Chelsea gets out of prison and says, you know what, I'm running for Senate. <laughs> it's fantastic. Chelsea was sentenced to 35 years in jail initially, served seven years, got the, you know, commuted, came out 22 months, ran U.S. Senate, and then they tried to throw back, they tried to make Chelsea Manning, Testify. They try to make Chelsea Manning testify. Private Manning, a U.S. soldier who told the truth. We're going to treat a soldier? We're going to act like we support the troops? And this is how we treat a soldier that told the truth? What the fuck is the matter with you all? This is disgusting. Anthony Tringa should be absolutely ashamed of himself. Anthony Tringa, this is, this is America. George Galloway says that Chelsea Manning's lockup and then psychological torture and all the bullshit Chelsea Manning had to go through because they needed a confession, right? They needed a Chelsea to tell on Julian, so they needed Chelsea to snitch. Chelsea says it goes against my principles, you know, it goes against my values. George Galloway says this whole thing with Chelsea Manning, Julian Assange, and Edward Snowden, this is the cutting out of tongues. The murder of truth, cutting out of tongues, the murder of the First Amendment, arrested in 2010. So, God, Chelsea Manning has done enough time for, you know, if you thought it was a crime, you know, back the fuck up. Let Chelsea Manning live Chelsea Manning's life, refusing to testify to a secret grand jury in there with every single one of the Trump officials. None of them testified at the Senate impeachment, right? So, refusing to testify to a secret grand jury. So, Jesus Christ, they wouldn't testify out in public. And meanwhile, you're trying to what? Take Chelsea Manning into a dark building, a dark, darkly lit building in handcuffs. And then saying, you tell us what you know. And it's a secret grand jury, a state secret that's been going on for many years. Chelsea Manning's free, recovering from the suicide attempt. So, I hope it wasn't too bad if it didn't... Hope the didn't try to you know slice the neck. Try to you know I don't know exactly what the um, attempted suicide was. 
And like I said, I hadn't heard um, any comments, no public comments for Chelsea Manning since the release. The judge, Anthony Tringa, is going to go ahead and make sure $250,000 worth of fines are going to be levied against Chelsea Manning. So fantastic, Chelsea Manning, American hero, told the truth, saw murder, saw innocent journalists and children getting shot at, journalists being murdered, children being gravely injured, and said, this isn't us, this is not what I signed up for, we're the good guys, how can we're allowed to murder just, you know, wanting murder right there in the middle of the streets? What the fuck? Chelsea Manning is the, is the good person in all this. So, it didn't work, Anthony Tringa, your tactics didn't work, you attempted forced testimony, or confession, didn't work, the system just about killed another person though. Bernie Sanders won the Mariana Islands Caucus. Bernie Sanders gets four delegates. Joe Biden gets two delegates. Bernie is gaining. The momentum is gaining. So Bernie Sanders, burners, burn, baby, burn. Here we go. We're going to win this, right? Come on, Florida. <laughs> Come on, Illinois. Come on, Florida. Come on, Ohio. Florida, Ohio, Arizona. Yes, sir. A bastion of socialists in Arizona. I know it. I know you got socialists. In, in the Democratic Party in Ohio and Florida and Arizona. Come on. 1932, a Democratic Socialist swept the country. Won 44 of the elections or so. I heard that everybody born on the Northern Mariana Islands are U.S. citizens. Hell yeah. You're a friend of Bernie. You're a friend of mine. So everybody on the Northern Mariana Islands, I give you U.S. citizenship. You all have U.S. citizenship requested by me. But, you know, even though Mariana Islands are U.S., uh, Northern Mariana Islands, if you're born on that island, you're a U.S. citizen, just the same as anybody born in, you know, Alabama or Texas or Montana. But it's not true for American Samoa or Puerto Rico or Guantanamo Bay. Northern Mariana Islanders are Americans, but Puerto Ricans aren't. Puerto Ricans are right there off the coast. Puerto Ricans are, are NASA territory. Why would they not be citizens? But yet, Northern Mariana Islands, they were like all the way over there by China, right? They banned, actually, China, Chinese travelers from coming to their country with this whole... They actually have to worry about... I mean, they're right there at the heart of the coronavirus. And uh, they've also got a military base. They're protesting there. So, Northern Mariana Islands, they got some... They got some uh, passion there, and of course, passion recognizes passion. Bernie Sanders is going to take two-thirds of the delegates, four delegates in the Bernie's pocket. Joe only got two. Joe just dropped out. Joe, you lost the Northern Mariana Islands caucus. Why is Joe Biden even still in this goddamn race? Why would anybody, who the fuck asked him? And then how the fuck is he winning? This is surreal. This is ridiculous. This is, what the fuck, America? You're not really looking at the issues or the values or nothing, are you? You're not really, you're just kind of like Joe's core. So he's a, a potato with aviator glasses. You're going to go with the potato with aviator glasses? I don't know, you know, I'm sure he's just a potato, but he got aviator glasses on. He does potato fucking cool. He does potato. He makes potato look good. Edward Snowden said that Chelsea Manning stuck to her principles, her guns, her values, her core. Moral convictions, the government cast Manning into a dungeon for resisting a scheme to make publishers of news subject to the Espionage Act, of course, of 1917, anti-free speech, you know, law of Woodrow Wilson to fuck over Eugene Debs and Charles Schinks and the Abrams and his four Russian buddies and... I'm sure you, you're America. You know all about the es, fucking espionage act, the bullshit of the fucking espionage act. So Edward Snowden recognizes, right, real recognizes real. Edward Snowden sees what Chelsea Manning did, stuck to her guns, just like Edward is stuck, sticking to his guns, sticking to his principles, his values, his guns, his moral convictions reign supreme. That's more important to Edward Snowden than, you know, having a massive domestic surveillance state all in the name of terrorism, which really, power and control, let's be honest. So, yeah, tonight, 
let's check out the debate. Bernie's won the Mariana Islands. He's got to have a great-ass debate tonight. And then he's got to win this Tuesday. So, you know, I'm not holding. I am holding my breath. I'm holding my breath up until Tuesday. And we'll see, you know. I will vote for Bernie Sanders in any election. You, If I see Bernie Sanders on my ballot, I will, you know, check his name every single time. I will vote for Bernie Sanders until the day that I die. When I uh, don't, what I won't do is I won't continue to cheerlead for something that, you know, I'm not for sure if it's going to win. It doesn't seem likely. And so, you know, because I'm, um, I guess I'm sort of looking at time and saying what's valuable, what's not valuable, and it doesn't seem like it would be a valuable use of my time to keep saying rah, 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 Bernie Sanders, you know, run, Bernie, run, and then to see him just crash and burn at the convention and then tell me to go vote for Joe. I did that four years ago. Not going to do it this time. Howie Hawkins has a progressive platform, but he's not dynamic in the least bit. Howie Hawkins is not dynamic. So, um, yeah, I don't, even if he was dynamic, that would help. No, that's all you need, I think, is actually dynamism. Get some dynamism and a third party can win. Uh, you know, the presidency, Howie Hawkins, there's not very, you know, I don't know what's going on with the libertarians, but the Greens, the Greens don't seem to have um, very many, it seems like it's going to be Howie Hawkins, and he doesn't seem like he's going to be too. So, yeah, I'm just going to focus on local and state issues and just, you know, um, kind of back away from the national narrative because it's, if it's Joe versus Donald, that's, you know, a conversation's not even worth having. That conversation's so far to the right, it's not even worth having. So, anyways, let's hope Bernie Sanders does good tonight. Peace!